We all know about Michael Jordan's greatest playoff performances, the iconic moments and images where he stood out and excelled at the game's highest level when the games mattered the most. This is how he established his dominance, kind of like how I recently did in Scotland thanks to established titles. Established titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. It is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lords and ladies in English. I recently got my official certificate which features my land's unique plot number. What's really awesome is that the first 200 viewers purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking distance. Depending on how many of you want to become a lord and a lady, we can build our own basketball kingdom. If you purchase a title pack, you'll get at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland and an official certificate with a crest. You can also officially include the title Lord or Lady on your credit card, plane tickets, dating profiles, etc. It makes for a great last minute gift. Established titles will plant one tree with every order thanks to them and their charity partners, One Tree Planted, and Trees for the Future. With the help from my community, I imagine we can start up an entire forest. Established Titles is actually running an early Black Friday sale. Plus, if you use the code Johnny Arnett, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash Johnny Arnett to get your gifts and help support the channel. Despite Michael Jordan being seen as arguably the most clutch player to ever live, there were several times where he was anything but. Some of these instances, many Jordan stands would prefer to pretend never existed. But alas, we're diving into them for a more honest and genuine understanding of basketball history. Number 5. Game 6 of the 1992 Eastern Conference Semifinals against the New York Knicks With an opportunity to close out the series, Jordan produced one of the worst postseason performances of his career. In a hostile Madison Square Garden, New York completely controlled the game from a physicality standpoint and had Jordan somewhat homesick. The Bulls were actually up by two points heading into the fourth quarter, but Jordan went ice cold in the fourth, resulting in the Knicks winning the game by 14 points. On the night, Jordan struggled his way to a total of just 21 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 turnovers on 9 of 25 shooting from the field. He was also 1 of 5 from 3 point range, and only 2 of 4 from the free throw line. Number 4 Game 4 of the 1996 NBA Finals against the Seattle Supersonics This wasn't just one of the worst playoff games of Jordan's career, but it was one of the most inefficient series of his career as the Seattle defense did a fantastic job of making Jordan uncomfortable and forcing him to take extremely difficult shots. In this game in particularly, it was Gary Payton's Hall of Fame defense that caused Jordan problems. The Bulls had the opportunity to sweep the series, but were instead blown out in Seattle Stadium as Jordan put up a disappointing stat line of 23 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists, and 4 turnovers on 6 of 19 shooting from the field. Ultimately, Jordan would go on to secure his fourth championship ring, but a sweep of the 64 and 18 Supersonics would have made it really difficult to argue against the 96 Bulls being the greatest team of all time. Number 3. Game 2 of the 1989 Eastern Conference Semifinals against the New York Knicks Usually, Jordan was the one dominating New York, but not on this night, as MJ had the lowest scoring playoff game of his entire career. Jordan wasn't just inefficient from the field, but from the free throw line as well, as he finished with only 15 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists. To sum up just how disappointing of an evening this was for MJ, consider how John Paxson was the team's leading scorer who took less than half as many shots as Jordan did. Before their home crowd, New York crushed Chicago with a final score of 114-97. to Number 2. Game 4 of the Eastern Conference Finals against the Miami Heat On this night, Jordan put up a stat line that didn't look all that bad, at least until you looked at his efficiency. With an opportunity to sweep the Heat in Miami, 
Jordan absolutely folded as he put up 29 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 turnovers on a disgusting 9 of 35 shooting from the field and a terrible 0 of 8 from 3 point range. And due to this, the Heat won the game 87 to 80. Since the NBA merger in 1976, of playoff games where a player attempted at least 35 shots, this was the most inefficient shooting display in NBA history. To say that Jordan was bad in this game would be an understatement. This was literally the most inaccurate brick fest that we've ever seen in the modern playoffs. Fortunately, the Bulls were able to eliminate the Heat in the next game, despite another night of inefficient shooting from MJ. If the Bulls hadn't won the series, this performance would have been haunting MJ's legacy to this very day. Number 1. Game 1 of the Eastern Conference Semifinals against the Orlando Magic The greatest choke of Michael Jordan's career came on a season where the Bulls failed to win the championship. Whether or not you agree with the narrative that Jordan was still rusty from his baseball playing career, you can't argue with the fact that he was simply not up to his standards on this night as Jordan finished with only 19 points on 8 of 22 shooting from the field. He also had a disastrous total of 8 turnovers, with the last 2 turnovers coming in the final 20 seconds of the 4th quarter, each of them in a 1 possession game. These 2 blunders and the game's most crucial moments were the most unclutched things we had ever seen from him. Jordan said after the game that he felt personally responsible for his team losing, and even Orlando's Nick Anderson said number 45 is not number 23. I couldn't have done that to number 23. So what do you guys think? Were these Michael Jordan moments something that should impact his legacy, or are these just insignificant games that don't matter in the grand scheme of things? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.